Okay, so this video is about Java arrays. If you learn about arrays in Python, it's a lot similar than arrays in Java. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to make a file. So let's go ahead and go to other, go to file. Let's name it arrays.java. It's good to name your files whatever you're doing. So if you're doing arrays, then name it arrays.java. From here, what we have to do is we have to start. We need our syntax. Our syntax is very important because it's what, I like to call it, it's what initiates every program, but typically it's a set of code that must be present in every program in order for it to compile. So let me go to package, and then I'm gonna put the name of my package. Y'all can go ahead and skip this because y'all don't have a package. If you do have a package, then you can go ahead and declare that because you're because the my files that I'm making are inside the package, so I need to declare it in order for it to be compiled. But y'all can skip this because I'm pretty sure I'd say 95% of y'all don't have a package. So this the next thing here is what you can start following up with. So let's go ahead and say public. I don't know my bad. Let's go ahead and say class, and then we need the name of our file. So I'm gonna go ahead and say arrays. This is all review. You can check my Java introduction for all for all this stuff. Okay, from here, what we can then do, we can do public static. By the way, this is your name of your file. So don't just go ahead and say arrays, you're going to need an error. So let's go ahead and say void, let's go to main string arcs. This is all the syntax, by the way. A void just means there's no return value. So you're going to see system.out.println statements because void does not have a return value. So you can't just use return, which you would normally do in methods. Methods, this starts to change. You'll see strings, you'll see ints in there. And then public is just a modifier. Um, we'll learn more about that in modifiers. Okay, there we go. Let's save it. So now we have officially set up our file. Now let's go ahead and talk about what we're gonna be doing. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be talking about arrays. The first thing we need to do is we need to declare our data type. My data type is going to be a string. However, it can be an integer, it can be a boolean, it can be anything. However, your elements that will come later must follow the data type you've chosen. Meaning if you've done integers, you're not going to put words for your elements. You're going to put numbers, right? That's exactly what we're gonna do because you're gonna get an error if you do that. So if you're doing, if you're declaring a string, then put words. If you're doing an, if you're declaring an integer, then put numbers. After this, we then need a name. So I'm gonna name it Battle Royale. After that, we then can put an equal sign and then we can put the elements of our array. Typically the elements are related to the name of your array. However, they don't always have to, but it's good that they do so that you know what you're doing. But all your elements must match your data type that you put, that you declared at first. So let's go ahead and fill those in. By the way, this can be whatever you want, but it has to be strings if you're declaring a string, it has to be numbers if you're declaring an int. So let's do that. Um, where? Okay, and there we go. Let's end it there. And now we have our array set up. However, we cannot compile any code unless we manipulate with this array. So what we have to do here is we then have to start manipulating with this array. So the first thing that we can do is that we could access a specific element in the array. So zero will always be the first element of every array. If you learn about arrays in Python, you already know this. However, if this is your first time doing arrays in general, then you're going, it's going to take some time to get that in your head. So let's go ahead and just put a system.println message and let's put the name of our array and then in square brackets, the element that you want to access. I want to access the first element, so I'm gonna put zero. If you wanna access the second element, you put one and then so on. And then let's put a semicolon on there. And now let's run it. And there you go. We will see the first element of the array, which is Fortnite. That is the first element of our array. So next, let's talk about 
what we can do with the array. The second thing that we can do is we can replace one of these elements that we have originally had with something else. Let's say you don't like something, you change your mind. That's good, that's okay, that happens. Then you can just go ahead and replace it. So to do that, all you can just do is you can just put the name of the array and then in square brackets, the element that you want to replace. Once you do that, you can then put an equal sign and you're going to put what you want instead and then put it with the semicolon. Then you're going to do system.println and then name of your array and then the element. As simple as that. And then now let's run it. And there we go. The first element of the array is now replaced. The third thing that we can do is that we can do a dot length. Dot length is pretty much, it just tells you how many elements are present in the array. So the result that we're going to get is five because there are five elements in the array. We're going to get five because there are five elements in the array. So that one is pretty simple. Now, finally, for the last thing that we're going to be doing is something a little bit different. It's called a for loop. For loops essentially iterate through all the elements in the array. So let's go ahead and say for. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and put int. Let's put i equals zero. As you start doing Java and as you start learning more about loops, you'll know what this stuff is, but I'll just summarize it out for you. So dot length pretty much just tells you how many times you want the loop to iterate. We only want it to iterate once, so we're going to put i equals battle rail dot length. After that, the next thing we need to do is we need to do, oops, my bad. That should be a semicolon, and this should also be a semicolon. And then we do i plus plus. So i is just a temporary value that stores all the elements in the for loop. i can be x, it can be anything, but i is typically the temporary, it's the default value. And then what we can do here, oh, whoops, my bad. What we can just do here is we can do system.out.println and then well and then i because i is a value that holds all the elements of the array oh my bad this should be a less than i've been mistyping a lot today so please forgive me for that and then this should also be a semicolon that is also my mistake so there we go. We have created our for loop. So once again, dot length just shows how many times you want the loop to be iterated. I is our temporary value. So it's just it's just our temporary value. Um, we're going to make I zero for now. However, that will change. And I plus plus is just our simply our increment. And what it's going to do here is that's just going to show us it's going to list all the elements that are in our array. And that's pretty much it. Those are the four ways we can manipulate with an array in Java. So if you had any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. I always look forward to answering comments and I always and always love helping people. So with that being said, um, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new, if you enjoyed the video, um, be sure to give that a heads up. It always helps the channel and we always love support for the channel. Also, by my off time when I've not been uploading videos, I've also been working on my website. The website's going to be in the comments below as well. So go ahead and click on that. I've been starting a new course. Lessons are going to be updated regularly. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.